KMTV Action 3 News Upfront at 4 starts now. Good afternoon and thanks for watching Upfront at 4. I'm Jennifer Griswold along with Jim Flowers in the Control Comfort Weather Center. Coming up, team coverage this afternoon on the recovery of a missing child and the murder of his mother. Plus, a big traffic change coming to one of Omaha's busiest roads, the intersection you may want to avoid. And Lindsay, I understand, is out on the golf course looking for a driver or a putter. Lindsay, what's going on? Well, you know, maybe not a driver or a putter for this one, Jim. Maybe some sunshine. That would that would be a little bit helpful for today, but it's not completely necessary. The one thing you're going to need for this is a soccer ball. That's right. It's a new game coming to the Metro called Foot Golf. I'm going to give you the scoop that's coming up in a little bit. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, I don't know I about foot say. golf. Not, a, not ideal golfing weather. Though. No, it's not. It, it's been a heck of a win this afternoon. <laughs> if you're golfing, I don't care what size ball you're going to use. You're going to have some issues on a golf course. Let's take a look at the temperatures. It's been chilly this afternoon. Good news radar right now is not showing any uh, rain across the area or snow, I guess, for that matter. Temperatures up around Columbus, North Fork in the 40s. Everyone else has been in the lower 50s. If you have some evening plans and heading outdoors, we're looking at chilly conditions through the uh, 6 o'clock hour. Maybe the kids have soccer practice, although I'm guessing the fields are a bit wet. 52. Skies begin to clear between 8 and 10 o'clock. In fact, I think by 10 we will be clear with readings there around 47. 30s are in the forecast tonight. You want to stick around, Jen? Prosecutors have charged the brother of a missing child and his girlfriend after the five-year-old's body was found in the Elkhorn River today. County Attorney Don Klein just announced murder charges against Roberto Martinez Marinero. Jake Wazikowski will have more on those developments in just a moment. But first, we go to reporter Rebecca Ray. Becky? Well, rescue f crews found what is believed to be Josue's body about a mile downstream from where prosecutors say his brother Roberto first threw him into the Elkhorn River. Now, the search for Josue's body began early Friday morning. Hundreds of city, state, and federal agencies traveled the banks of the Elkhorn by ATV, by boat, and by helicopter, all scoping out the area of the Platte, Elkhorn, and Missouri Rivers. And on day four of the search, the five-year-old was found on an east bank. The body is of a small boy. His identity is believed to be that of Josue Ramirez Marinero. However, we will have to do forensic identification to confirm the identity of his body. And though we are still waiting on those forensics to confirm the identity of the body, Josue's family has been notified. And back out here at the scene by 4th and Cedar, there is a memorial set up for both Ismenia and her children. Police visited this scene for a short time after Josue's body was recovered to continue their investigation. Reporting live, Rebecca at KMTV Action 3 News. Omaha Mayor Gene Stother released a statement today saying, in part, I am heartbroken for the family of Ismenia Marinaro and her son Josue. Omaha police and firefighters, with help from many agencies, worked for many days to find little Josue. Many are parents themselves who worked with compassionate determination to bring the emotional search to a conclusion. The suspects in the case remain behind bars this afternoon, awaiting their first court appearance. Less than an hour ago, Douglas County Attorney Don Klein spoke about the charges both face. Reporter Jake Wazikowski continues our team coverage with more on those charges. Jake? Yeah, Jen Klein said that the children were present when their mother was killed by at the hands, allegedly, by her own son. Roberto Martinez Marinero, the 25 year old Martinez Marinero, will be charged with two counts of murder, one count of kidnapping, and a weapons charge. His girlfriend, 24 year old Gabriela Guevara, will be charged with five counts of accessory to a felony. Roberto is accused of stabbing his mother multiple times and hitting her in the head with a baseball bat before dumping her body at Fourth and Cedar. Roberto then allegedly dumps 11 month old. Angel Ramirez Marinero at a La Vista dumpster and throws five year old Josue in the Elkhorn River. Klein says they are filing aggravators, which means they will seek the death penalty against Roberto. Guevara is accused of helping get rid of evidence and his mania's body. If convicted, she faces two to 35 years in prison for all of those accessory charges. We will have much more coming up in our later shows, including. If prosecutors are revealing any motive, plus also what may have influenced Roberto during these crimes, and we'll have some exclusive video of investigators at a relative's home of 
his girlfriend as well. That's coming up in our later shows. Reporting live outside the Douglas County Courthouse in downtown Omaha, Jake Wozikowski, KMTV Action 3 News. Police are searching for a suspect in Omaha's latest murder. They've issued an arrest warrant for Juan Manuel Martinez for the death of David Silva Avalos early Sunday morning. Police say Martinez stabbed Avalos near 44th and F. This is the fifth murder in Omaha in six days. The community will hold a prayer walk tonight near the scene. It starts at 530. A prison riot in southeast Nebraska leaves two inmates dead. Corrections officials believe other inmates likely killed them during the disturbance at the Tecumseh State Correctional Institution. The state corrections director says one to 200 inmates were involved in the situation that started Sunday afternoon. Officers regained control of the prison this morning. Two prison staffers were assaulted. Two houses in Papillion went up in flames this morning. The catch? Firefighters started these fires. A local church donated the houses to the Papillion La Vista Fire Department. They used it as an opportunity for veteran firefighters to train with younger members. The houses have served as training sites a few times over the last month. Orange cones will soon be a daily sight for nearly 80,000 drivers on the Dodge Expressway. The eastbound on-ramp at 168th will be closed starting at 10 tonight. And you can expect lane restrictions from 156 to 180th in both directions. The work should be wrapped up by October 31st. Hundreds of thousands of country fans poured in and out of downtown Omaha this weekend as superstar Garth Brooks took the stage. And after his shows wrapped, Garth took time to thank the men and women in blue who helped keep those fans safe and traffic moving around the CenturyLink Center. The Omaha Police Department posted this photo on Facebook with the hashtag support blue. Before Garth took the stage for his sixth and final show last night, he made time to help out some kids in Omaha. It's part of the Music Star's Teammates for Kids Foundation. And a story you'll see only on three. Reporter Josh Egbert caught up with Brooks helping out. Teammates on three, one, two, three. On a football field in North Omaha, touchdowns were scored. Tackles were made. But points didn't matter. It's all a win. Every one of them here is going to win today, and it's nice to see the smile on their face and the glow in their eye. Behind those smiles was a message, a message brought to Omaha by a country music legend. Because the main ingredient in being a good teammate is loving one another. But the most important person that you have to love is yourself. Garth Brooks spent Saturday afternoon walking around the football field near the Boys and Girls Club watching his Teammates for Kids Foundation in full swing. This is the highlight of the tour for me. Even over playing, watching these kids coming out, getting the love from these coaches, and uh, getting to just run free and kind of show what they can do. The foundation helps kids through sports, education, and health in partnership with celebrities and athletes. Former NFL players Chris Kelsey and Chris Bober also help to lend a hand. You're impacting lives, and uh, that's the main thing, especially young lives like uh, these kids here. Kids like Abdul Muhammad. I like that the NFL players came out to speak to us and see. I want to influence how I act on there so I can see how, what they did to make it so I can try. And for Garth Brooks, that's what teammates is all about. Each one of you is going to change the world, trust me. It's just how and how much. Garth's teammate foundation has been going now for about 10 years. He says he'll continue to do it for as long as he can. Reporting in Omaha, Josh Egbert, KMTV Action 3 News. Many of you took to our Facebook page to comment on this story. Richard wrote that was so nice for him to do. He is welcome back to Nebraska anytime. Robin says even if you don't like country music, this guy keeps giving and giving. Jerry wrote great show and a good person. I'm now a Garth Brooks fan even more than ever. And CM says Always nice to see someone who has made it want to help others to make the best of themselves as well. You can join the conversation too. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or email us at upfrontataction3news.com. Look for the hashtag upfront at four. A big pileup on a Missouri interstate clogged up traffic, the likely cause of the crash. And a trip to a Montana park had tourists running in fear. What they did wrong when the bears gave chase. And Lindsay Thies is teaching us all about Foot golf, whatever that is, Lindsay. Well, it's half golf, it's half soccer, and it's something people are getting a kick out of here in La Vista. Coming up, I'm going to show you how the sport works. That's after the break on Upfront at 4.